Hello. Today I'm going to talk about are you born gay? Um, first I'd like to begin with the psychology of homosexuality. In 1974 the American Psychiatric Association came out with a statement that they no longer felt it belonged, that the diagnosis of homosexuality belonged in the DSM. Um, in 1994 they came out with a statement saying the research on homosexuality is very clear. Homosexuality is neither a mental illness nor moral depravity. It is simple the way a minority of our population expresses human love and sexuality. Study after study documents the mental health of gay men and lesbians. Studies of judgment, stability, reliability, and social and vocational adaptiveness all show that gay men and lesbians function every bit as well as heterosexuals do. Um, then there's also a lot of uh, talk, especially from the Christian community, that, um, oh, it's from an overbearing mother or from an absent father or something like that. The Kinsey Institute in 1981 did a study of 1,000 homosexuals and 500 heterosexuals, and they made the statement that homosexuals more, were, more, were no more likely to have been smothered by maternal love, neglected by their father, or sexually abused. So now that we can lay that to rest, um, let's move on to the genetics and the biology behind um, what we know so far. Um, Michael Bailey at Northwestern University studied twins, and um, he found that you're nearly twice as likely to be gay if you had if you were identical twin and had a, a gay twin. Um, whereas uh, fraternal twins were less likely. So this caused people to question what would be the um, biological or evolutionary advantage of, of um, carrying on that trait when it didn't serve a reproductive role. And they came up with three. Um, one was the kin reproductive success, and that's um, that... Um, the trait lived on through the survival and reproductive success of their relatives. The other one was the mother's successful genetics, which was based on an Italian study which showed that um, maternal relatives of homosexual men were more likely to have increased number of offspring. And then the other one was a composite of adaptive traits with the idea that um, gay men are the composite of several advantageous adaptive traits all combined into one. Um, Dean Hamer um, published a study in 1993 that was very controversial. He again published another study in 1995, which was um, basically picked apart. Um, he had a study of 100 gay men and found that 10% uh, of brothers of gay men were gay compared to 3% of the general population. Um, 33 of the 40 uh, gay brothers that he um, that he mentioned uh, inherited similar markers on XQ28 region. Um, part of the reason that this study was, um, I don't want to say debunked, but that it uh, was kind of put on the shelf was because um, some people felt like he purposefully left um, people out of his research that could have skewed the results in a negative direction towards that region. Um, and also, this was 1993-1995 time, and um, people were very scared that people were going to use genetic information to cause abortions or to try to um, genetically engineer gay-free babies. Um, De Dean Hamer made a comment um, that there is no height or hair color or eye color gene. Uh, there are several genes to make these traits up. Um, and likewise, he believes that there is no one gay gene, but a composite of genes that um, causes somebody to be gay. Um, he also says this should not exclude environmental factors. And he's not talking about the way you're raised, but more um, environmental hormones in the mother's womb and exposure to virus as a child. In 2005, Lander and Krugeliak uh, studied non-X chromosomes 
um, and their linkage to um, homosexuality. Um, chromosome 7, 8, and 10 all showed linkages at 7q36, 8p12, and 10q26. Um, their strongest association with association was 7q36 um, and it was the only statistically significant one but again their study size was um, rather small. Then um, Michael Bailey and Alan Sanders just very recently in 2014 um, talked about a study that they have completed but has not yet been published of 409 gay brothers um, and it was the it was three times as big as the next biggest um, identical twin gay brother study. Um, and they, from what they can conclude, um, about 30 to 40 percent of um, all genetic, all genetic um, uh, contributions uh, contribute to um, somebody being um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, whatever. Um, they, they found um, gene association specifically on two chromosomes. One was chromosome 8, and they didn't, um, they didn't uh, say the locus on that chromosome, but I imagine it's probably 8P12. Um, and then they also found it on uh, chromosome X, the same place that Hamer found it at XQ28. Um, Dr. Sanders said, when people say there's a gay gene, it's an oversimplification. There's more than one gene, and genetics is not the whole story. Then there was other studies about different associations, um, kind of trying to compare physiology to uh, gender preference, um, specifically talking about the brain and the mind and the head. Um, gay men and women are are likely to have equal sized brain hemispheres whereas lesbians and straight men are more likely to have an increased right brain hemisphere. Uh, the VIP SCN nucleus of the hypothalamus is larger in men and in women and larger in gay men than heterosexual men. Um, gay men's brains respond differently, differently to Prozac. Um, the functioning inner ear and central auditory system in lesbians and bisexuals are more like functional properties found in men than in non-gay women. Uh, the supra, uh, or I mean the um, um, pheromones have been studied as well and gay men are more likely to respond to pheromones of men than women. Um, the amygdala um, is more active in gay men than non-gay men when exposed to sexually arousing material. Um, and gay men have uh, higher scores than non-gay men on um, tests of object location memory. Some other studies, um, gay, gay men report on average slightly longer and thicker penises than non-gay men. Um, they have uh, finger length ratios between the index and ring fingers um, that, are, that seem to be different. They're more likely to um, be ambidextrous or left-handed by 39%. Um, 23% had counterclockwise hair compared to 8% in the general population. Um, gay men were more likely to have ridge density in the fingerprints on their left thumbs and pinkies compared to straight men. And the length of limbs and hands of gay men is smaller compared to the height in the general population, but only among white, white men. So um, I think there's still a lot coming about in this research. But specifically, um, oh, and, I, and I wanted to show this. This is the this is my depiction. Chromosome eight, and right there, that little black line right there, is eight uh, p twelve. I think I've got a q, but it's eight p twelve. And then chromosome X down here at the end of the chromosome is X Q twenty eight in that white region. Well, the next section is um, on epigenetics, and um, with identical twins, you would think that if one is gay, since they share the same genetic material, that 100% of the time the other one would be gay, and then people would argue that it's environmental as far as raising goes, and, and maybe even hormonal environment 
um, that could contribute to this, and that's true. Um, but um, scientists are beginning to think more and more that epigenetics could play a role in um, in this. And when I say epigenetics, basically what I'm saying is certain genes can get turned on or turned off. Um, and there's basically three different processes that do this, but one is called methylation. Um, testosterone, for example, um, is formed at uh, week four of gestation and at week um, and is released at week six. And testosterone masculinizes the body and the brain, um, including the hypothalamus, which um, scientists feel controls who we find sexually attractive to. Um, and if certain genes could get turned on or turned off, it may explain um, how gender preference um, changes. And so um, there is a uh, scientist Rice, Freiberg, and Gay Roulettes in the Quarterly Review of Biology in 2012, which came up with um, an algorithm or basically a formula of what they felt fit the findings of uh, the prevalence of what we find um, homosexuality in the general population and um, also fit the, the idea of epigenetics as well. So you can see here that um, so you have the mother who has um, one set of, of genes from her, her mother and another set of genes from her father okay but um, because she's XX chromosome her body has um, feminized um, these these genes um, th this is a gene for um, gender um, this is sexual preference and this is sexual identity. So what they think happens is that the mother contributes um, half of her gametes to her egg and then the father gives half of his gametes and the sperm and together they unite to form an embryo. Um, in this particular case uh, it's a um, male embryo that's formed. Um, what they think is happening is that um, during this process, when the mother is donating her gametes, um, there's supposed to be a, um, I forget the term they use, but it's basically like a deletion so that um, there's no uh, feminizing uh, characteristics of that gamete. But when the gamete joins together and, and it's an XY um, embryo, it will masculinize. But what's happening um, in this case, they think, is that the mother's um, feminizing um, trait is not getting turned off um, because it's, it's um, the epigenetics of it. That gene is not being turned off and it's getting um, passed along. And, and in this particular case, I made it blue and bold, um, but I could have easily made it non-bold because they're, they're thinking that, um, that the... Um, variability of the potency of how strongly something is uh, feminized or masculinized um, can vary and that can also contribute to the uh, wide variety and, and um, sexual preference. Um, so in this particular embryo um, he would identify as a male. Um, his uh, actual gender would be male but his sexual preference would be um, uh, um, attracted to other males because the um, sexual preference from his uh, mother um, that would overpower the sexual preference um, gene from his father. Um, and I think that uh, seems to make a lot of sense. Um, then going on to hormones, there is a German researcher, Gunter Dorner, um, who manipulated fat, re who manipulated fetal rat brains. Um, and he was able to invert the sexual behavior towards other sexes. Um, so um, feminized male rats uh, that were deprived of uh, prenatal testosterone were likely to raise their hump and invite other males to mount them. Um, masculinized female rats um, um, given excess testosterone um, would mount other females. 
Um, this has also been shown in other species as well, like female um, sheep. Um, we're more likely to show homosexual behavior um, if their pregnant mothers were injected with testosterone during their a critical time in their gestation period. Um, Dr. Uh, Reiner and um, John Gearhart um, released a study um, in 2004 about cloacal extrophy in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with cloacal extrophy, but basically um, you're born with the bladder and certain um, organs outside the body, and a lot of times this will um, cleave the, the genitals or make them very difficult to interpret. Um, it's hard to make a penis out of um, that kind of chaos. It's easier to make a vagina. So um, they studied 16 genetic males who were made into females. And they were assigned, 14 were assigned female at birth, and two, the parents refused to assign any gender to. Um, and what they found by following these people over time is that some people came up to their parents and said, you know, I know I was born a female, but I feel like I'm a male. And then after the parents told them of what had happened, some more came forward and said, okay, I'm so glad you told me this because I feel like I'm a male. Ended up that uh, of the 16 people that they followed, only five continued to identify as a female afterwards. Um, and they feel like um, this may be because um, the ability of androgen to act on target tissues in utero could affect subsequent sexual identity. Um, for example, a genetic male with androgen resistance uh, who cannot respond to androgens identifies themselves as female after puberty. This is called androgen insensitivity syndrome, um, and these people, um, their body does not respond to androgens, and they're born completely looking female. They have breasts and uh, a vagina, but they don't have the female internal organs. Um, however, if somebody has 5-alpha reductase deficiency, they, can, they still see themselves as male, even though they similarly have problems with outward development. And they feel that that's because um, the actual testosterone is important in the masculinization and feminization of the brain. Um, there's been studies that show uh, with each additional um, older brother, it increases the odd of a man, odds of a man being gay by 33%. And they think that this is because there's maternal antibodies that attack the fetus um, and with each number of births, um, that these antibodies will um, result in change in fetal development. Um, they, they've noted that this does not seem to affect females in utero and that this is only seen in right-handed in individuals for whatever reason. Um, and then uh, my last topic, I know this has been long, but my last topic is um, same-sex attraction in, in mammals. I just want to point out that there's over 450 species of animals, according to Bruce um, Bagamil, um, that have exhibited same-sex relationships. I mean, I could just list a whole bunch of species, or you can look them up yourself. Um, but rams, for example, 6 to 10% of the time, they show um, behavior of mounting other male rams. So um, it's just important to look at all the facts and it's probably several things going into play and not just one thing so we may never find a clear-cut answer but one thing is certain um, that we definitely are most likely <laughs> we're definitely most likely are born this way um, I believe we are and the question is um, would God make somebody a certain way only to condemn them for it and I don't think he's that cruel. Thanks.